Okay, so for number five, to rewrite the radical uh, as an exponent, we're going to change to a power of one-third. And this one's x to the third to the one-fourth. But we can combine those exponents. When you have an exponent to an exponent, you multiply. So that's x to the three-fourths. Um, going from a, rad a exponent to a radical for 6a, the denominator is the number that goes with the radical. Okay, so now to evaluate, that means simplify and find the value. Um, so for 7a, 9 to the 1 half is a square root, so that's 3. And then the 81 to the 3 fourths, I'm going to think of that as 81 to the 1 fourth cubed. You always put the rational exponent first because what times itself four times here is 81. That's going to give us 3. So now we have 3 to the third is 27, and 3 times 27 is 81. And now for b, the negative part of the exponent means move it to the denominator. So that's 27 to the 1 3rd squared. What times itself 3 times is 27? So we get our answer of 1 9th. Now for C, this exponent applies both to the numerator and denominator, and we're going to multiply the 4 and the 1 fourth. So that's 3 to the negative 1 divided by 7 to the negative 1. Now the negative means move that term to the other side of the fraction, so the 7 comes to the numerator and the 3 comes to the denominator. And then lastly for D, the power of 10 goes to both terms, and I'm going to do that uh, before I combine the terms in the fraction, because I don't, I'm sorry, in the parentheses, because I don't want to have to add the fractions. So that's going to be 2 squared times 2 to the 5th, which gives us 2 to the 7th. So you could either leave your answer as 2 to the 7th, or if you know what that is and multiply it out, it's 128. Okay, so for 8 in A, the exponent of 12 gets multiplied to both the exponent on the A and the B. So 1 third times 12 is 4. And then for the B, you can reduce um, the 12 and the 4 times the 3 and we get 9. So the 12 power goes to both of those. In B, we're going to multiply the coefficients. We're going to add the exponents. So you have to add the fractions. You need a common denominator of 6. So this becomes negative 4 6 plus negative 1 6. So that's x to the negative 5, 6, but we don't leave a negative exponent. The 24 stays in the numerator, and x to the 5, 6 becomes your denominator. Okay, for c, we're going to subtract exponents because it's division. We need a common denominator. 
So that's 9 fifteenths minus 10 fifteenths, which is negative 1 fifteenths. So for the So then this is x to the negative 1 fifteenths, but we don't leave it like that. We can't leave a negative exponent. So we write it as 1 over x to the 1 fifteenth. Okay, for d, we need to simplify with the like variables, so we're going to handle a, b, and c all separately. For a, when we subtract the exponents 2 thirds minus negative 1 third, we get 1, so that's a to the first. And then for the b's, when we have 1 minus negative 2, we get b to the third. And then for the c's, when we subtract, that's going to be negative 10 fourths, which reduces, and it's negative, so it has to move to the denominator. So we have a, b to the third over 10, I'm sorry, over C. And then the 10 fourths reduces to 5 over 2. Now for E, we can multiply the exponents. So that gives us x to the 15 tenths, and then that reduces, um, each divides by 5, so that's going to be 3 over 2. Okay, so for f, we have the radical, so for the fourth root of 81, what times itself 4 times is 81, gives us 3. And then for the fourth power here, we can think of this as 4 divided by this 4, and we get x to the first. For g, what times itself 3 times is 8 is 2. And then for the variable, 18 divides by 3, and we get x to the sixth. And for h, do h over here. For h, um, because the radicals are the same, we can combine the bases. So that's the third root of x to the ninth. And then we have the exponent of, to the negative fourth. And then we can simplify. The cube root of x to the ninth is x cubed. Now we can multiply those powers and move the term to the denominator so that the exponent is positive. And lastly, for this should be an i. Um, they all have the same radical, so I'm going to make it a big fifth root of a to the tenth over 32 a to the 15th because you can add the 2 and the 13 exponents. So now every piece has a nice fifth root. The fifth root of a to the 10th is a squared. 2 times itself, 5 times is 32. And then the fifth root of a to the 15th is a to the 3rd. So now simplifying one step further, a squared over a to the third leaves us with an a in the denominator. And now to graph for number nine. It's a cube root, so the key point um, is going to be the middle of the S shape, and it's moved to the right one and down two. And then to sketch it,
It's a very shallow uh, S shape. And now for B, it's a square root, and that's been moved to the left five. and increases from there slowly, and I have to go back and do my domain and range. So the domain for A is all reals, and the range is all reals. But the domain for B is x is greater than or equal to negative five, and the range is y is greater than or equal to zero. And then for 10, to describe the transformations for A, um, the negative 5 inside means to the right 5. And the negative coefficient means it's been reflected over the x-axis. For B, uh, we'll start with the vertical stretch of 3. from the coefficient, left 8 from the plus 8 with the x, and then down 2 with the negative 2 at the end. Now C, we actually have to do a little bit of work before we can describe the transformations. Because of the negative on the x, we have to factor that out so that we get the correct left or right transformation. So now this negative means it's been reflected over the y-axis. It's gone to the right 2 and up 7. Okay, so now for matching. Um, okay, there's two square root graphs, so let's start with b and c. Uh, graph 5 has been moved to the left, so that's graph C. And graph 4 has been moved up to, so that's graph B. Now for the others, uh, graph 2 is an x to the third, so that's A. And now the transformations for graph 1 is to the right 1 and up 2, so that's D. And then that leaves... E for graph 3. Okay, 12 and 13 are done in the calculator video, so that just leaves 14. Okay, so for A, we have to start by dividing both sides by 4, and now to eliminate the exponent, we're going to raise both sides so the reciprocal of the exponent, and that gives us 8 to the 1 third to the 4th, which is 2 to the 4th, which is 16. So x equals 16 for a. Now for b, we have to add the 21st. divide by 6, and now when we raise both sides to the 5 over 2, because the denominator is an even number here, we have to remember our plus or minus. And now 4 to the 1 half is 2 to the 5th, and then that gives us plus or minus 32. And now for C, we have to subtract the 6 to start. And right from here, I can say there's no solutions because a square root will never equal a negative value. In case you don't notice that and you kept solving, we would square both sides. Add the 7, divide by 5, 
but then you always have to check your answer. Anytime you start with a radical that has an even, um, if it was written as an exponent, it would have an even denominator or it has an even power out here on the radical, we have to check our answer. So we're going to go back to the very original problem and plug in x. And we have to see, are we going to get 4? So that's 2 plus 6 is 8. That's not 4, so again, we're back to the no solutions. And now to D. Uh, because it's a cube root, it's okay that it equals negative 6. This is D. And we're going to start by raising both sides to the third. And then negative 6 to the third is negative 216. We're going to add 18 to both sides, and that gives us negative 198. Because we started with an odd number here with the radical, we don't have to check our answer. And then lastly for E, we're going to start by squaring both sides to eliminate the radical. But you have to be careful on the right, that means x minus 11 times x minus 11. And you have to multiply that together. Now we're going to move everything to one side because we're going to have to factor. So we have x squared minus 23x plus 117 equals 0. So now we need to think what multiplies to 117 that adds to 23. And that's going to be negative 16 and negative 7. So we get x equals 16 and x equals 7. But because we started with a square root, we have to check both answers. So we're going to take 16 and 7 and substitute them back into the original. So the square root of 16 plus 9, will that equal 16 minus 11? And that works. But now for 7, is the square root of 7 plus 9 the same thing as 7 minus 11? And the square root of 16 does not equal negative 4. So 7 is extraneous, and 16 is our only answer.